Welcome to the Blowing Rock Core podcast, where we focus on local leaders building community through community-centered philanthropy, leadership development, and networking opportunities. This podcast series is brought to you by Granite Insurance. Granite Insurance has been an independent insurance agency since 1936 and is serving clients in all 50 states. Their primary goal is to empower their clients to be successful. Visit graniteinsurance.com to learn more. Welcome to the March edition of the Blowing Rock Core Local Leaders Interview Series podcast. On this podcast, we will sit down with the leaders of organizations throughout the high country that are setting the standard in what it means to be a leader, and they'll give their testimony on how they got to the position they are in today, along with what they are doing to take their leadership and organization to the next level. Our guest today is the director of the Small Business Center at Caldwell Community College, Carmela Tomlinson. Carmela, thank you so much for taking the time to talk with us today. Great to be here, PJ. Thank you for the invite. Terrific. Well, Carmelo, the first question I ask everyone that comes on the podcast is, what did you want to be when you were growing up? By the way, I love this question because there are so many different answers, I'm sure. But like most girls, I would say I wanted to be a teacher. I have a, a younger sister. And as children, we used to play house, of course, and play school. And since she was younger, she was the student and I was always the teacher writing on the chalkboard and handing out papers, that kind of thing. And as most people, I changed my mind about my career. Um, I obviously value our educators and teachers, and it's kind of unique that as part of my job today, I do train entrepreneurs on how to start their business. So, So there's some elements of teaching in what I do in my career. Okay. Well, that's very interesting you say that because you are our fourth guest on this podcast since we launched it uh, in late 2022. And you are the second of the four that are kind of in a leadership position, community-based position when knowing growing up, they wanted to be in that mentorship teacher role. So that's an interesting trend I'm starting to see develop. And I'll be interested to see when I get more data, there's that direct correlation to where people are uh, in their lives today and in the community and leadership at that kind of lends itself to going back to that childhood goal of being a teacher because so much of what we do is teaching even if it's not in a a school setting um, there's that aspect of knowledge and you know helping someone get further than where they were when you first started on a conversation with them or uh, teaching or whatever the case may be so Carmel, let's kind of take us back for you as a, an individual uh, mentioning going from wanting to be a teacher and, and that transition. Um, how did you get to where you are today? Okay, so I do wear many hats like lots of lots of people. Mm-hmm. But I'm going to start from when I graduated from Lenoir Ron University. And I was working full time, going to school full time as an evening student. And I was working for a local furniture manufacturer here in Lenoir. And I was in the marketing department and I got what I call the marketing bug. And I knew I was I knew right then that I wanted to do something with marketing. Mm -hmm. So I worked with them for about seven years. And then I actually went to work for an advertising agency. And then when I was there at that agency, it was it was just something I'm like, I want to do this for myself. So I worked for that agency for about a year and then I started my own business and we just celebrated 26 years. So as you can imagine, owning your own business is very rewarding. And I really thought, you know, I would retire just operating my business. But about two and a half years ago, Dr. Porch, who's the president of Caldwell Community College and Technical Institute, asked if I would consider running the small business center for the college because I was an entrepreneur in a native of our county and have those business relationships already established. Mm -hmm. And I remember when I started my business, I had a counselor that helped me get started. And I thought how cool it would be to become full circle and to be in that role counseling small businesses. So that's kind of how we got here today. Perfect. Perfect. Uh, Well, I know Caldwell Community College overall has kind of set the same standard across the state and really probably across the country of what it means to be an excellent community college and help develop your community and and just kind of churn out through the generations fantastic individuals that turn around and do fantastic things. I I want to brag on them for a little bit because I wouldn't be where I am today. Um, I went the route of graduating high school and and, personally had some challenges that didn't let me go straight 
straight into college or, or four year university. So I worked for, you know, about a year or so trying to just get my finances and life together after high school, figure out what I wanted to do and, and was fortunate to, to go to Caldwell and get my two year associate's degree to transition to app. And, um, you know, that having that in our backyard is just very um, overlooked, I think, when you think about um how the the system in the college helps people get ready for the next level and even in the last 10 15 years since I was in that position going through school myself um to see what they've done in the local community um and setting up our high school age students our you know early college age students for success is just and beyond just a college transition the trades and the skills um, law enforcement, lineman school, all of that um, is just fantastic to see. But on that note, tell us a little bit more about the small business center, how we you know, kind of led it into a little bit of how it was started and with Dr. Porch having that conversation with you. Um, but from that conversation to now, just tell us kind of what that growth and development has looked like. Okay, great. And yeah, I want to mention I went to Caldwell Community College as well for two years before I transferred to Illinois Run. So it's it's been a valuable resource for me as well, personally. And so um, I had to learn about the Small Business Center. To me, it's been a hidden gem. I, I really wasn't for sure what all that entailed. So when I, I researched, you know, the history about the Small Business Center and you may or may not know, but the Small Business Center Network is associated with the community colleges in the state of North Carolina. So there's 58 of us. Um, it is our state largest state supported small business assistant initiative. So I think that's pretty cool. And I have found out uh, working here that this is not available in all the states in our country. So it is somewhat unique to North Carolina. It did start in 1984 with eight small business centers. And then in 1995, um, they, init they were able to get a small business center in each community college. So there's usually a small business center within 30 miles of a community college. So um, in I don't know if you know this as well, but it's a free resource because we are funded by the North Carolina General Assembly. It's our tax dollars that pay for our, our resources and our time. And our main initiative, obviously, is to um, help entrepreneurs, to help startups. And we also work with existing businesses. And our primary services is one-on-one -on -one counseling. So it could be counseling on how where do I get started? to start a business? How do I write a business plan? It could be a lot of people come in because they know their craft. So you could be a mechanic and you know everything there is about a car and how to do repairs, but you may not know how to read a profit and loss statement or how to use QuickBooks or just the management side of business. And most businesses struggle with marketing. And so that's an area, obviously, I have a lot of experience in and can help but so we do the one on one training and then we're constantly doing seminars and workshops uh, on a variety of topics to just help our business owners wherever that training is needed. That's what we do. We fill that void. And I thought I would just share with you because I think this is pretty cool. When you look at the stats as the network as a whole over the last five years, we have helped start an average of 650 businesses in the state of North Carolina. We have helped to create and retain almost 4,000 jobs annually in the state of North Carolina. And each year we have about 45,000 attendees at one of our workshops or seminars. So that's pretty cool. Yeah, and that's a testament to the the growth and I think the exposure you're seeing in our community is people are finding out about this resource more and more. And it's just going to continue to say, well, you know, you see a successful business that five years ago. Well, how did you get started? And it was, oh, I was talking to Carmela or or any other of the small business centers throughout the state. So that's a huge testament to what you're doing and the, the university is doing for our community. Um, and kind of on that note, I mean, when you kind of lend into those statistics a little bit, but 
you know, right now we talk about the most recent economic summits and they talk about, you know, where the economy is right now. We're looking at, you know, the, the scary word of recession, um, but it's all part of the economic cycle. And in that, I think, is the you talk about the transfer of wealth that is happening right now, where that generation of the, the baby boomer generation is retiring or closing their businesses to pass it down to the next generation, whether that's family or non-family. Um, and, you know, that's something grand insurance has gone through with um, the ownership that we've seen in the past 30 or 40 years transitioning to that next generation. Um, where do you see that when you're talking with these individuals? Is that something that you're seeing um, kind of come to you for assistance and, and expertise as well as what do you think that's going to continue to look like over the next five years or so? Yeah, it's interesting that you asked me that because our um, Secretary of State, which is Elaine Marshall, actually came and visited our local businesses on Tuesday of this week. And in mm -hmm. fact, there's an article in front of the paper today. Okay. And um, they're saying, you know, in 21 was a record year for startup businesses in the state mm -hmm. of North Carolina. And then we beat that record in 22. And then here we are, we're on track um, for 2023 to, to be another record-breaking year. But I have to say for me personally here in Watauga and Caldwell counties, which is are the counties that I represent, mm -hmm. we continue to get more requests, more requests than I can actually um, be able to get into my schedule. Right. But it, we've just seen it really grow. Um, a, I feel like our, our marketing is working and word of mouth working with mm -hmm. startups they're sharing with their friends and other people in the community. So we've been so busy. We're actually hiring um, someone just to focus on Watauga County. That job is posted now. So that's that's how fast we're growing. Right. That's amazing. Well, so, you know, when you talk about that and you people think Caldwell County, they know the Boone campus as well as the kind of the headquarters down in the mountain in Hudson. So having those two counties and they're so unique. Um, they're right next to each other, but there's literally a mountain between them um, and the kind of the, the economy, the demographic, you know, you have a ton of manufacturing down the mountain, whereas up the mountain is more, you know, your seasonal tourism based retail based items. So how do you kind of manage that difference of, you know, one community versus the other and having similar but different needs from a business standpoint? Yeah, obviously, Caldwell and Watauga counties are completely different. Like you said, we have more manufacturing here, and there truly is more small business up in Watauga County. And so we've just got so many resources uh, up in Watauga County for anyone that, you know, is thinking about starting a business or has one. And, of course, you've got the Small Business Center, and we have an office um, inside of the new Boone Area Chamber of Commerce. I think you got the Chamber of Commerce, you have the Small Business Center and the EDC under that one roof. Mm -hmm. um, so we, ha we have that going on. And then you've got the other resources like the SBTDC, which is the Small Business and Technology Development Center, which is associated with ASU. So where mm -hmm. the SBCs are associated with community college, they're associated with universities. And that's actually the counselor that I used when I started my business. Uh -huh. Then you have the high country startup and um, just so many different resources up there, but we all work together. Uh -huh. And I think the, the main mission is that we're here, you know, to boost entrepreneurship and uh -huh. all of that trickles down to our economy, which benefits us all. Absolutely. And you, you mentioned high country startup and the, the other resources there. So we we'll talk a little bit about, someone's wanting to start out in the business world, they have core young professionals with our networking events, our leadership development events. Um, High Country Startup is growing tremendously. I think their last two events have probably doubled and tripled and turn out. Um, people are continuing to learn about other people's businesses that otherwise you may not have heard of right here in town and they can serve on a, a national level and do such unique things. But if they are listening to this podcast or they just, you know, see a recent you know, chamber post about the upcoming seminar you have and just being more connected in Boone. Um, you kind of mentioned you do anything from counseling and helping, but what exactly does that process look like? Kind of walk me through if I were a small business owner on step one um, and I just shot, you know, sent you a phone call or email, what does that look like from there? 
Yeah. So really you just have to register. And as I mentioned before, you know, it's, it's, it's free. Your tax dollars pay for it. And the easiest way I can tell you to reach me is just going to the website, the Caldwell Community College website, which is ccti.edu slash small business. And from there, there's a link to register. But most of the time people come in and they're asking for, you know, um, help them to decide the legal structure, whether it's a sole proprietor, an LLC, a partnership or a corporation. Mm -hmm. And then we help them get their tax ID number. Um, we help them to write their business plan and some businesses need capital and funding. Uh -huh. So we connect them to wonderful resources like we have up in Watauga County, which is Mountain BizWorks. Uh -huh. And Mountain BizWorks is another um, resource that does training and one-on-one -on -one counseling. But they are definitely a, a lender that we go to and direct our businesses to work with locally for capital and funding. Awesome. Okay. Um, and then just one last, I know you've got that seminar coming up here in a couple of weeks with the Boone Chamber. Um, just to have to talk a little bit more specifically on that uh, event and what people can look like for that specifically. Yeah, that event, by the way, it's limited to 50 people because it is an in-person workshop. Um, uh -huh. And so it doesn't matter. You don't have to live in Watauga. Obviously, uh -huh. um, the Watauga businesses, we want to give them, you know, first first place for that event, mm -hmm. but it's on March the 21st and it's from 8.30 to 11.30 there at the Boone Chamber of Commerce and it's on strategic planning for business success. So really any business could sign up for that and probably should sign up for that, mm -hmm. but it's really, it's designed for business leaders seeking to begin a planning process that engages their entire team to produce a realistic action focused plan. And as you know, uh, we've heard the word pivot time and time again since right. COVID. But it's really just taking time to plan for your own business. And I know as a as a business owner myself, you're in the day-to-day -day operations and mm -hmm. sometimes it's hard to really work on your own business. That's so good. by the time, you know, that in that three hour time span, you'll learn to how to really put an action plan together to help grow your business. Perfect. Perfect. Well, um, I would say I look forward to being there, but I don't want to take someone else's spot with that seat cap. But I look forward to hearing how that event goes and the continued events as you continue to grow up here in the high country. Uh, so, Carmelo, let's go ahead and bring the conversation full circle. Um, and I always I like to end with two items. Um, thinking on this conversation today and looking back on where you've been to where you are now. What's the one thing you wish you had known or had done different um, for the people that are, you know, in your shoes, whether they're starting a small business or just out of college and have that same passion and drive that you do, that you could go back and tell yourself or tell them um, at that starting point? Um, this sounds so simple, but I'm a big believer in mentors. Mm -hmm. And I now have wonderful mentors in my life, but I wished at a, a young Carmela would have been able to find some, a mentor that I could get up under in the beginning of my career to have someone to kind of share those real life experiences mm -hmm. and also that person to provide networking opportunities. I think being a mentor is so valuable and um, I, I wish I would have had that person in the beginning because you're kind of blind jumping out on faith and not sure which direction to go and I think mentors really help us stay focused, help us not make some of the mistakes that they may have made in the beginning of their careers. So I, I would say I wish I would have gotten up under a mentor in my industry. Right, right. Um, and in that same thought, if you could ask the any individual or organization listening to this podcast today to take that one action that would make a difference, and it may be, hey, reach out and be a mentor to someone, but what would that be to advice you could give some other people? Well, PJ, I love this question because I'm a big, big um, supporter of this, obviously running the Small Business Center. So I'm going to ask everyone, listen, you need to support your local businesses. Mm -hmm. I mean, that is so important because we all have choices where we want to spend our money, where when we go out to eat, the gifts that we buy, the services that we um, purchase. So I'm going to say my motto is live local, buy local and support local. So everybody can do that. I just think you have to make a mental note. Let's really think about the small businesses in our area and really be a big supporter. 
Yeah, I, I couldn't agree more. We do. I mean, we live in such a beautiful, special place and we want to keep it that way. And I think a huge proponent of that is going out and shopping local, buying local, supporting local, like you mentioned. So, Carmilla, thank you so much for taking the time to talk with us and sharing your personal leadership journey, as well as giving our listeners an in-depth look at the Small Business Center, the opportunities you're giving the next generation of our entrepreneurs and leaders in our local community. This will wrap up this episode of the CORE Local Leaders Podcast. Thank you to our producer, Chris Faber, and our sponsors, the Blowing Rock Chamber of Commerce and Granite Insurance. This is PJ Hennessy. Talk to you again soon.